Welcome to this session. I am going to take up the poem, An Elementary School Classroom in a Slum. In the previous session, I took up stanza 1 and 2. Stanza 1 was about introduction to the children, about them and the second stanza was about the classroom in which they were studying, right? Let us move on to stanza 3 now. I will read it aloud for you. Surely Shakespeare is wicked, the map a bad example with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal for lives that slyly turn in their cramped holes from fog to endless night on their slog heap these children where skins peep through their bones and spectacles of steel with mended glass like bottle bits on stones. All of their time and space are foggy slum. So blot their map with slums as big as do. So what is the idea that is being shared with us in this stanza? These children's classroom has picture of Shakespeare, map of the world which does not indicate their world but the world of the rich. So definitely they do not understand Shakespeare, they do not like, they feel it is some evil person and map is a bad example because they do not learn anything out of it the ships and sun and love tempting them to steal. They also long for good things. So therefore sometimes probably they do steal. They are living their lives in cramped holes. Their homes are small cramped places from fog to endless night. From, from one end to the other end things are just not clear to them and on their slog heap these children were skins peeped through by bones and spectacles of steel. They are so thin that you know their bones are visible, they are so thin that means they are not healthy, they are malnourished, they do not get enough food and the specks that they are wearing are of steel heavy metal and glasses are also mended, mended maybe they are cracked, maybe they have simply put it and they come out of the frame like bottle bits on stones. All of their time and space are foggy slum, yes things are just not clear. So blot their map with slums as big as tomb. Even their place, their slums have to be shown on the map, okay. As you know, the poet has used many literary devices in, in this poem. Let us look at the literary devices. He has used metaphor extensively. An example for you, their homes are very small, cramped holes, okay. Similarly, they are repaired spectacles like bottle bits on stones. Then alliteration use of F sound from fog. The poet has used alliteration in other lines as well. There is another example bottle bits. So you go back to your poem, find out more examples of metaphor and simile. Let us move on to stanza 4. Unless governor, inspector, visitor this map becomes their window and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs break or break open till they break the town and show the children to green fields and make their world run azure on gold sands and let their tongues run naked into books. The white and green leaves open, 
history, there's whose language is the sun. So what is the idea depicted in this stanza? The poet is saying that the school is not going to change, the lives of these children is not going to change unless governor, inspector, visitors, that means people who are in charge of the education system, maybe educators, maybe policy makers, they visit the school, they look at the condition of these children, the map becomes their window and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs. So their lives are like cemeteries, it is shut, there is no opening. So the map has to become their window, that means they have to be put on the map, even they have to be recognized by people, by policy makers, by educators to change their lives, break open, they break the town, they have to leave this place and show the children green fields, make their world run azure on gold sands and let their tongues run naked into books, the white and green leaves. That means white and green leaves open, white refers to the books and green refers to the open environment. Give them books which they can read and enjoy, give them free and open areas to live so that they can also live a healthy life. History, theirs whose language is the sun. Give them that free expression that they require. Give them the education that can take them forward. Provide them with the equal opportunities. That is what the poet is trying to tell. Give them the equal opportunities. Then they will write their history, rewrite their history with in a language which will be as bright as sun because now they are going to narrate good experiences, things will happen for them, they will have good education, equal opportunities, they will learn, they will lead a good life. Let us look at the literary devices that have been used, now metaphor. Books and nature are expressed in the form of white and green leaves. Now another literary device that the poet has used is known as anaphora, use of repeated words in two consecutive lines, run is your and run naked. So this is known as anaphora. I hope it is clear to you, now you can annotate these two stanzas also, when you annotate you will have a better clarity because you are writing the summary of the stanzas. Do share it with your friends and learn from each other. Now there is another thing you can notice in the poem, for example, contrasting images have been given. A narrow street sealed in with a lead sky, far, far from rivers, caves and stars of words. So their life is far away from open spaces, beautiful rivers and stars of words. So contrasting images have been provided to create that image in front of our eyes. That is the beauty of the words. That is how poets make the poems immortal. We are reading it now after so many years, but we can connect with the poem. I think the whole scene is clear in front of your eyes, isn't it? That is the power of words. So let's understand now. The poet says if students studying in slums are truly allowed education in the form of free exploration, their language will gain the power and warmth of the sun. So therefore, these children have to be given opportunities, rather equal opportunities as all other children, then they will also learn and move on in life. They will acquire freedom of expression which will change their future 
and shape history for them. Even they will write their own history, rather rewrite. Now things have changed for them. I have a few questions for you now. Let us discuss for our understanding. I will read out the question and you look at your screens and find out the appropriate answer. What do the windows signify here? Time and again the word windows has featured in different stanzas. Does it mean a room with a view? Is it? I do not think so. A passage to come and go? No. A peek into the unknown world? No, out of the window they see their own world. Their world is limited to the window of the classroom. Their classroom and they, when they peep out of the classroom, they see their slums. So, the fourth is the right answer. There is another one for you. What does the poet want to do through this poem? What does he want? What is the message that he wants to convey? Draw the attention of educators and policy makers? Change the environment and pictures of the classroom? Move the children to an open space? Change the world map accordingly? Now which one do you think is the most appropriate answer or the best one? Draw the attention of educators and policy makers that even these children need equal opportunities. Provide them with that and they will be able to do something in their lives. So I hope the idea of the poem is clear to you. I have a few questions we will discuss. The question is what do you think is the color of sour cream? Why do you think the poet has used this expression to describe the classroom walls? The color we have discussed is also sour cream. Sour cream means yellowish. Now this yellowish gives us the feeling that it is dull. Maybe it is not very clean. So the poet has used this expression to describe the classroom walls. The classroom is dull, it has turned pale, the children are not very happy sitting in the classroom. Now the next question, what does the poet want for the children of the slums? How can their lives be changed? Why has he written this poem? He has written this poem to draw the attention of the educators, policy makers, governors, whosoever is at the helm of the affairs. You, because they have to intervene, the system has to take care of these children. Then the lives of these children will change. They also need opportunities, education and good life, equal opportunities for everyone. Now the next question, the walls of the classroom are decorated with the pictures of Shakespeare buildings of domes, world maps and beautiful valleys. How do these contrast with the world of these children? Yes, there is a stark contrast. Their world is dull. Their world is foggy. It is a lead sky. I would want you to go back to your poem, read it again find out the words that give the contrast and you can discuss it. I have given you a few hints like foggy, fog, lead sky. There are so many other uh, things that have sour cream also will feature over here. There are many other words that will be able to draw the contrast between the world that is depicted on the walls of the classroom and the world in which they live. Now I am going to talk about appreciating poetry. As I told you, why do not you have poetry groups among your friends? So appreciating poetry, I am going to talk about four C's only. You can add more to it, right? So I am going to discuss critical thinking. See when we are reading a poem, we must 
critically analyze it. And the next C is communication, collaboration and creativity. Let us look what do we mean by critical thinking. Thinking critically about a poem includes evaluating it, analyzing it and interpreting the message. Now collaboration. The ability to work in collaboration with others is a foundational skill both in the classroom and in future endeavors. Yes, collaboration as I have been telling you whatever you write share it with your friends have a group. I know you are going to share it with your teacher also, but when you collaborate you share ideas, you share views and you learn from each other's style of interpretation. This does not mean that you know you have a different interpretation of the poem, no. How you present the interpretation, the kind of words that you, you have used. Now communication, communication involves expressing thoughts clearly, hmm? articulating opinions, communicating coherent ideas, motivating others. I think this poem has done all of this. This should be part of our appreciation of the poetry. We found everything in this poem. It has communicated the ideas very clearly with the reader. It has motivated us hmm? and it has articulated an opinion in a very strong way and has expressed the thoughts very clearly. I hope the way the poet has written the poem, it is clear to you how the children living in this, these slums are deprived of the basic amenities, good education, free expression and good life. And the poet is asking people to do something for them. Then creativity. Now appreciating poetry requires creativity. Creativity is one of the things that makes people unique. It allows people to realize they do not have to be exactly like everyone. So I hope appreciating poetry is clear to you. There is more to it. Through poetry, the poet communicates emotions and the reader interprets those emotions and derives meaning from the poetry through their own personal lens. We always connect poetry with our present context and we have been able to connect it. Poetry is also about sharing social experiences and sensitizing the audience. I think this is one of the main objectives of language learning that it sensitizes the students, readers towards their environment. This environment can be physical environment or the social environment. Physical environment means you have to be sensitive to, to the world around you like trees, rivers, let us not pollute them. So that is another challenge in front of us, how to keep these things clean. Then there is social environment. There are many issues that need to be addressed like girls education. We need to work towards that. Now I have a writing task for you. Based on your observations of the world around you, Yes, you are mature students, you observe things. Choose a social concern that needs to be addressed. Now the task is either you write a poem or you write an article and you can share it with us. When you write something creative, follow the process approach to writing. I will quickly revise the process approach with you that what does it entail? Process approach means that first you generate ideas. You have chosen a topic. Now around that topic you choose or generate ideas. Write vocabulary or words that you are going to use related to this particular idea. Maybe you want to do some research in the library, you can do that also. Then next is writing the act itself. Now here you are talking about or 
you are writing according to the form that you have decided. The form can be poem or an article. So, accordingly you are, you are going to write down your thoughts. If it is a poem, it requires a different treatment altogether. If it is an article, a different treatment. Keep your audience in view. You decide about the stanzas or the paragraphs, right? You have written. Your third step is reviewing and revising. Now, review your own work. For reviewing, you can give it to your friend also. Take their ideas. They can give you ideas for improvement, okay? And when you read it yourself also, you will find that at certain places, you can change the words or you can rearrange your sentences and then you are revise, you are revising it. Then comes editing. Editing means you have revised it. Look at the punctuation marks, edit it very carefully because punctuation marks help us create meaning. A wrong punctuation mark may give an entirely wrong meaning and then you rewrite your paragraph to be shared with others. With this we have come to the end of this session. Thank you.